Good afternoon, my students and other learners. Uh, welcome to our today's lesson, which is on a computer network. My name is Madam Patricia. We start by definition of terms, and we begin with definition of a computer network. This is a collection of two or more computers connected together using a transmission media. So these transmission media can be either a telephone cable or a satellite. And all this is done for the purpose of communication and sharing of resources. You can also define it as a collection of independent entities that are arranged in a such manner to exchange data, information, and resources. We also have server, which is a powerful computer that provides services to the other computers on the network. So these services, they are the resources that we share, things like files, programs, and so on. We also have clients. These are the personal computers attached to the network, uh, which are used by the clients or the users to do their work. Data signal. This is a voltage level in the circuit which represents the flow of data. We also have multiplexing. It is the process of sending multiple data signals over the same medium. Demultiplexing, uh, de this is the process of separating the multiplexed signals at the receiving end. Uh, we also have data communication. It is the process of transmitting data signals from one place to another through a communication media. So we have some basic components of data transmission system. We have a central computer. Uh, we also have terminal devices that are attached. Then we also have the, the te telecommunication link between now the central computer and the terminal uh, devices. We have a diagram that is explaining how a network is connected. And in these, you can see we have the server, uh, which is connected to the communication medium. We have client servers, uh, client computers, which are connected to the communication media. Then also we have printer, as an example of some of the resources that we use in a network. We also have frequency. Uh, it's defined as number of cycles made by the wave in one second. And this one is measured in units called hertz, whereby one hertz is equal to one cycle or one second, one cycle per second. Then we have bound, which is the unit to measure the speed of transmission. So generally one bound is one bit per second. We also have the bound rate, which is the rate at which data is transferred or transmitted. And this one is measured in bits per second. We also have a broadband transmission, and it's where an analog signal is sent over the transmission medium using a particular frequency. We also have attenuation, which is the decrease in magnitude and energy of a signal as it progressively moves along a transmission medium. If the signal is not boosted, it will totally be lost along the way. 
and may never reach the transmission, uh, the destination. Then we have modes of data communication. We have three main methods. We have simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. Simplex transmission. This is where there is only one direction of communication. Uh, for example, when you listen to a radio or television, you can only listen, but you cannot uh, send back your feedback. So that is an example of simplex transmission. Half duplex transmission. It refers to communication in both directions, but one direction at a time. Uh, meaning if a sender must have to send the data before recipient can reply. For example, the walkie-talkie, the ones that are used by the police. So one uh, police has to, to talk, maybe hello, hello. The other one has to listen so that he can reply. Then we have full duplex transmission. And this is where communication occurs in both directions simultaneously, meaning you don't have to wait the recipient to reply. You can continue sending data and also he can also continue replying. Example of this is when you are communicating, chatting using emails, chatting using WhatsApps, you can communicate to each other simultaneously without waiting for the reply. Purpose of networking and also you can call them the advantages of networking. We have resource sharing. In networking we are able to share expensive resources um, because uh, we have connection of the network like big things like uh, files the programs, uh, printers, we can share them using one network. Remote communication. By use of network, you are able to communicate to a person who is far away from you. you if, for example, you are in Nairobi, you can uh, make a communication to a person who is in uh, Mombasa, or a person who is in abroad and so on. Distributed processing facilities. This can be made possible through networking because you can share the facilities that you'd like to be processed amongst the, the clients, computers that you have in the network. Cost effectiveness. You find that uh, the laying out a network is very expensive, but after laying it out, you will find that uh, it is a bit cheaper because you can share most of the expensive resources that uh, if you were to make uh, a computer for every client and make sure it is fully with network, with printer, with all those files and programs, it will be very expensive. But because it's in a network, everything is being shared, then it becomes cost effectiveness. Reliability. Um, a network, if it doesn't have any problem, you can always be able to use it. Then we have the disadvantages or limitations of networking. One of them is the uh, security issues, and this one is um, witnessed when um, you have issues like other uh, people that are able to access your data without your permission over the network. Then also the high initial costs that I've already mentioned of buying equipment to start the network. The moral and the cultural effects, this one is written, witnessed um, in uh, most of the sites. Uh, we have people who can post, who are able to post things that are not uh, 
supposed to be watched by uh, people that are under 18 years. And this one you find they are violating the cultural uh, values or in a society. Then we have spread of terrorism and drug trafficking. Because of the introduction of the network, we have things like chatting through WhatsApps. Uh, people can form WhatsApp groups. And this one makes it easy for the spread of terrorism and also uh, drug trafficking, selling of drugs, illegal drugs, and so on. It's very possible by use of uh, groups, WhatsApp groups, and also emails by send of emails, recruitment of uh, terrorists. It's also very, very possible. Then also we have over reliance on network. Uh, this one is whereby uh, you cannot do without a network. You can also call it addiction. Meaning when you just sit down, you want to maybe watch something from YouTube, you want to check your WhatsApp, you want to be online 24 seven doing things through the network. So those are some of the disadvantages of networking. Um, data communication. It is the process of transmitting data signal from one place to another through a communication media. Mm -hmm. Then we have types of computer networks. We have three main types of computer networks. Local area, computer network, metropolitan area, network, uh, wide area, network. And those are the short forms for each, as you can see. So we can begin with local area network. In short, we call it LAN. This is a computer network that is formed within computers that are connected in a relatively small geographical area. For example, in a one building, in a school, in a college, in just a small area which is between 10 meters to 3 kilometers. So if it exceeds 3 kilometers, that is another network is not LAN. Advantages of this LAN, it enables many users to share expensive devices. It has low costs. Um, it requires very less expensive equipment to start. It enables users to communicate with each other by sending messages or in a chat. It transmits data at a very fast rate. This is because the network is just within a small geographical area. Then because it's just a small network, you are able to uh, check on errors, so it has very small error count. Metropolitan area network. It's made up of many lands connected together. And this one covers uh, an area that is within a radius of five kilometers to 50 kilometers. Uh, E.g., we have, we can have um, a network which is covering a town or entire city. We have some characteristics of man. One is, it is a larger, larger than land, but slower than one. It's faster than one. Um, with data rates of 100 MB, uh, MB per seconds and above, are more expensive than land, and also they are prone to few errors. We have the last one, which is wide area network. And this is the largest size of network. It covers a large geographical area, such as a country, 
a continent or even the whole world. It consists of many lands, it consists of many months that are connected together to form one network. We have some characteristics of this. They cover an limited area. They are expensive because it requires very expensive devices. Their transmission link are also expensive. Um, it has to cover a long area, so it has long distance transmission. Have low data transfer rates compared to LAN and MAN. Then also they are slower than LAN and MAN, and this is because of the distance that it covers. Then they are prone to many errors because it covers a large area. We have protocols. Our protocols are a set of rules and procedures that govern a communication between two different devices. We have uh, in networking protocols are rules, technical procedures that govern communication between different computers on our network. So under these we have OSI layers and we begin by defining what is our OSI which is a standard, or you can call it a uniform method or methods used by, to enable different systems to interoperate, to interoperate with each other and to be able to be portable across one another. So in this we find there are seven layers and they have, each have its own function so we have the first layer, we call it, um, we begin from the top, which is the seventh layer on that OSI layers, application layer. This is where the user applications run. It provides services as file sharing, such as file sharing, distributed processing, file transfer, network management, ETC. Then we have presentation layer. It defines data formats to be exchanged and also adds formatting, display and encryption information to the data being sent. Section layer sets up data transmission sections between two communicating devices in the network transport layer. It manages data transfer over the network to ensure reliability. It also ensures that data units are delivered free of errors in sequence and without loss or duplication. Tra uh, network layer. It serves the transport layer by adding address information to the data packets and routing it to its destination. Data link layer, it prepare, prepares data for going on to the communication medium on the physical layer. It has error checks and correction on the information to the data. Physical layer, it transmits raw data packets via the network card through the transmission media in form of bits. So un under these layers we have protocols and we begin with the application layer. It has some protocols like simple mail transfer protocol. This one is for transferring emails. We have file transfer protocol. This one also transfers files. We have Apple Talk and, and Apple Share. This one is for use, it is used for Apple computers. Then we have protocols at the transport layer. Transmission control protocol. 
It enables delivery of sequence data of uh, the network. We have sequential packet exchange. It is used in novel networks for sequenced data. Then we have NetBill. NetBill is used in Microsoft and IBM networks to establish a communication session between computers in LANs. Then we have Apple Transaction Protocol. Uh, this one is used in communication session and transport protocol, which is used in Apple computers. We have protocols found in network layer. We have internet protocol, which does, it does the packet forwarding and routing. And we have internet uh, work packets exchange. This is a network protocol for packet forwarding and routing. Then apart from protocols, we can talk about network topologies and we can define it as the physical arrangement or layout of components in a network. We have the examples of the topologies, star topology, bus topology, ring topology, mesh topology, and tree topology. We can start with star topology. It consists of computers and other devices, each connected to a common central server that we call hub. The nodes communicate across the network by passing data through the hub, meaning if one of the client computers or workstation, we can also call them workstation sent data, it has to go through the central server, which now locates the destination of that message. Then it's now routed to the destination. We have the diagram of star topology. You can see the central server, which is hub. Then it's connected to workstations, or what we call client computers. We can also have resources like printers connected to it. Then from there, we can look at the advantages of this star topology. It allows sharing resources such as concentrators and servers, printers, files, and so on. It is easy to configure because you can you just have to connect the computers from, you connect them from the server by use of cables. You also have, you can say, um, if one of the workstations develops a problem, the rest of the network remains operational. That is also an added advantage. It is simple to control. You can also say it can be extended easily because you just need to be with an extra workstation with a cable. It is flexible to add another workstation or delete or deleting is removing. And also lastly, it's easier to troubleshoot or correct errors. Disadvantages of star topology are uh, one, if the central hub fails, it brings down the whole network. So it means every computer will not be working. Then it is costly, and this is because of requiring, it requires a lot of cables to connect those workstations. Installation is time consuming, then lastly requires special device for signal regeneration across the network, which is also expensive. Bus topology. In this, all the devices in the network are connected directly 
through appropriate interfacing hardware to a single transmission cable that we call bus or backbone. Then it uses a coaxial cable as transmission media cable, uh, which carry only one message at a time. So this is the diagram for bus topology. You can see the central backbone or bus that we are calling bus is there and workstations connected to it we have printer connected then server is there then at the end we have something we call terminator this is attached at the end of the cable or of the bus uh, to avoid signals from bouncing back or forth when they are sent uh, in, instead of reaching the destination they can bounce back so this one uh, it avoids that. Advantage is it is easy to install. It is inexpensive, that is not costly. It is easily to extend. It allows workstations to communicate independently. Then failure of one workstation does not affect the whole network. Disadvantage is if a cable breaks, that cable which is running in between them, the whole network will be down. If that backbone or bus, cable that we are calling bus, breaks, then it means the network will be down. The performance degrades since there is no signal integration. Then troubleshooting is difficult because you are not able to know where the problem is. If it is on the cable, you'll have to test almost everywhere to know where the problem is. Then also, uh, only limited number of computers or workstations can be connected to the cable. So if you want many computers, you'll have to look for a long cable, that is the bus or backbone, so that you can have many computers. Ring topology. In these computers are connected to one another in the shape of a closed loop using a single cable. Uh, data flows from one computer to another while it's looking for its destination until it reaches the destination or the the computer that is supposed to receive it. Uh, that is the, the diagram for ring topology. Advantages of this, they use short length cable. It's simple to install, provides high performance for many users, provides an orderly network in which each device has access to the token and can transmit data. Disadvantages. Failure of one computer will affect the rest in the network. Uh, then a modification is difficult because if you are adding or removing, you have to interrupt or disrupt the whole network. Troubleshooting can also be difficult because you have to test so many devices to know where the problem is. Mesh topology. This one uses separate cables to connect each other to every other device on the network. Straight, uh, a straight, providing a straight communication path. As you can see on this diagram, Every device is connected to each other using a separate cable. Advantages, it is fast. This is because when you look at the diagram, the cables are connected to, each device is connected to the other device using a separate cable, so the data will just flow direct to the other device without wasting time. Failure of one node or workstation 
will not cause communication breakdown. It is also easy to troubleshoot in case of problem. Also, it's flexible and it enhances fault tolerance provided by excessive link. Disadvantages. It is difficult and also expensive because you have to buy so many cables. It is costly as it requires a large amount of cables. It's difficult to add more workstations and also difficult to isolate the facts during the lack of central control point. Tree topology. This is an hybrid topology where all other uh, topologies are connected to a linear bus or backbone like this. You are able to see. So we have inside this, we have star topology, we have bus topology, we have ring topology, and also we have mesh topology. So it consists of many, many other topologies are connected in one bus or backbone or cable. And that marks our end of our lesson. Thank you so much for listening.